Hello and welcome to this video on determining the gradient and y-intercept of a line using its equation. Now we're going to look at the general equation of a line and how we can use that equation to work out what its gradient is and what its y-intercept is. And I'm hoping that you've already viewed the video or have already been taught about what gradient means. But I will briefly recap it here. So let's just say I've got a line like that. Then this here is known as the y-intercept. And what's meant by the y-intercept is that it's the point at which this line cuts the y-axis, i.e. intercepts the y-axis. And we use the symbol C to indicate the y-intercept. And then what the gradient is, as we looked at in a previous video, is the steepness of the line. And what that means is each time x increases by 1, what does the y-value change by? And that is the gradient. And we use the symbol M to indicate the gradient. So that is the gradient there. And I encourage you to look at the video on that. And if we've got those two components of the line, we've got its gradient, its steepness, and we've got where it cuts the y-axis, the c, then we can form an equation from that. And the general equation is y equals mx plus c. So we've got the gradient there, and we've got the y-intercept here. So just to give you an example, if I had y is equal to 3x plus 2, then that m is the number in front of the x, so that is the gradient, the gradient is 3, m is 3, and the y-intercept, that plus thing after, that is 2, so the y-intercept 2. And then just to give you a rough indication of what that would look like, well, the y-intercept is 2, so it's going to cut the y-axis at 2, the y-value of 2, and then the gradient of 3 means that each time x increases by 1 square, say, or 1 unit, it goes up three units, so that's one across, three up, and that means the line is going to be going up quite steeply, and it's going to be an infinitely long line. So that's what this equation would look like if we were to sketch it. So in this video, we're just going to say, well, if we already have the equation, how can we work out what the gradient is and what the y-intercept is? And if it's already in this form, this equation is already in this form, then it's very easy because we just look at the number in front of the x to get the gradient, it's 3, and we just look at that thing over there, the non-x term, the constant term, to get the y-intercept. Now, equation might not be in this particular form, but it might still be a straight line, and in which case we just need to rearrange it to get it into this particular form. So let's try some of these questions, and we want to find the gradient and y-intercept of each. So let's do 1a. We've got y equals 4x plus 3. Now this one is easy because we've already got it in that particular form, and we can just read off the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x, the number in front of it is 4, so the gradient m is 4, and that constant term, the number on its own, is the y-intercept, so c is equal to 3. And what about this second one here? We've got y is equal to 2 plus x. Now, this is not exactly in this form. We don't have a number in front of the x for start, but kind of we do. There's implicitly a 1 there. And these terms in the wrong order, we could reorder these to say 1x plus 2. But the thing is, we've already got y on its own on here. We can just imagine that as the first term. So whatever number we have in front of the x, even if it's not the first term, like it is here, we can just read the number in front of the x off to get the gradient. So the gradient is equal to 1. And then the constant term, the number without any x on it, that is the y-intercept. So we've got c is equal to 2. What about this one? Question two, we've got y is equal to x minus 2. Now this pretty much is in this form, except for we've actually got minus something. We were subtracting a number rather than adding a number. And that doesn't really matter because we could see this as y equals was well, implicitly a 1 there. And when we subtract 2, that's kind of the same as adding negative 2, isn't it? So we could see that as y equals 1x plus negative 2. And then it's much easier to see what the m and the c are. So the gradient is the number in front of the x, which is 1. And the y-intercept, the c, is that number there, which is minus 2. Right, what about these other ones? We've got y equals 3x. Now, I notice this time we don't have a plus c, but we could just put plus 0 there. That's absolutely fine. It doesn't change the equation when we add 0. And that means we can see that the gradient is equal to the number in front of x, which is 3. And the y-intercept c is 0. And if the y-intercept is 0, that means it's going to cut here, which means the line goes through the origin. Right, this one here. 
we've got y equals 1. Again, we need to get it into this form here. So we've got no x term here. We've just got, we've got a constant term, but we've got no x term. So what we can do, similar to what we did above, is we can just create an x term by just saying 0x. We've got 0 lots of x. That's just the same as 0, so it doesn't appear at all, plus the 1. That's going to be the same. And then again, we can just read off the number in front of the x is 0, and this constant here is 1. Now on to question 5. I've sneakily added a question while you weren't looking. We've got 5a, we've got 3x plus y is equal to 2. Now this is definitely very much not in this form. And the key is, is just to make y the subject. Can you see that y is the subject of this equation? So if you don't have y the subject of the equation, just make y the subject of the equation. So we need to get y on its own. Well, how do we get y on its own? Well, notice to y, we're adding 3x. We want to get rid of that plus 3x. So we just subtract 3x from both sides. And then subtracting 3x gets rid of that plus 3x. We're just left with y. And we've got 2 minus 3x. Now, don't worry about the fact that you haven't got the x term first like you do here. It doesn't matter. We still read off the number in front of the x, which is minus 3. And then the constant term, the number on its own, that is 2. So the y intercept is 2. And that's, we were allowed to do that because y was the subject of this equation. So let's do b. We've got 2y is equal to 4x plus 3. Now, y is not the subject. It's almost a subject, but y has been multiplied by 2. We don't want that times 2 there, so we just divide both sides by 2. And then we get that becomes y. 4x divided by 2 is 2x. And 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, or 3 over 2 if you like. Let's just put 3 over 2. And then m is the number in front of the x, which is 2. And the y-intercept is the constant term. The c is 3 over 2, or 1.5. Now we've just got a couple more. We've got question 6, which is x plus 3y is equal to 2. So again, we need to make y the subject. So what's happening to y? Let's think of the story. Um, it's been multiplied by 3, and then you're adding x. So we first want to get rid of the plus x. We subtract x from both sides. So we just y now, because the minus x has got rid of the x. And then we've got 2 minus x. And then y has been multiplied by 3, so we have to divide both sides by 3. Now what many students would be tempted to do at this point is they write 2 minus x all over 3. But then that confuses matters, because you've kind of got a single fraction here. They haven't got two separate terms where you've got y equals mx plus c as the two separate terms, the mx and plus c. So when you want to divide by 3, just divide each individual term by 3. So we divide that by 3, it's 2 over 3. No recurring decimals, please, they're just evil. And then minus, when we divide x by 3, if you consider that as minus 1x, minus 1 divided by 3 is minus a third x. And again, it's better to write something x, a third x, rather than x over 3, because that just confuses matters in terms of trying to read off the number in front of the x. So that means m is the number in front of the x. It's minus a third. It's not the two thirds. Just because that's the first term doesn't mean that is the gradient. And then the y-intercept is the constant term, the number on its own, which is the two thirds. And then finally, we've got 7, the hardest one. We've got 2x minus 3y is equal to 5. Now, we're going to make y the subject again. What we could do is, I like the y term to be on the positive side first, so I'm going to add 3y to both sides. Um, or if you remember my changing the subject video, if y is being subtracted, you can use something called the swapsy trick. You can swap the thing you're subtracting and the result to get 2x minus 5 equals 3y. And now that equation has become much simpler. So now we just need to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that times by 3. So divide both sides by 3. So divide each individual term by 3. It's 2 thirds x. Don't write 2x over 3. That just makes it more complicated. Divide that by 3 minus 5 thirds. And 3y divided by 3 is just y. And then we can read off the value in front of the x. The coefficient of x is 2 thirds. That's the gradient. And the y-intercept c is the constant term minus 5 thirds. Now let's finish with these two test your understanding questions. So I want you to find the gradient and y-intercept, just as we have with all of these questions, for 
y is equal to 5 minus 3x. You can just read that straight off. You don't need to do any calculation there. And then the second one I want you to do is 4x minus 3y is equal to 7. You may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at these. Right, let's do it. Now, y is already the subject, so we just need to read the number in front of the x off for the gradient. So the gradient is minus 3. It's not the 5, just because it's the first term that doesn't make it the gradient. And then the y-intercept is the constant term, the number on its own, which is the 5. And then the second one, we need to make y the subject. So to get y on its own, y is being subtracted, so we could use the swapsy trick. So 4x minus 7 is equal to 3y. And then we divide both sides by 3. So we get 4 thirds x minus 7 thirds equals y. And that means the gradient is the number in front of the x, 4 thirds. And the y-intercept is the constant term, which is minus 7 thirds. Well done if you got that right.